Let me take you through the user interface of Affinity Publisher. When we run the app, we're greeted with the welcome screen. Now this gives us access to the latest news and updates. It also gives us the ability to download and view samples and of course the tutorials. And also we can stay connected via the social media channels here. We can also choose to create a new document. And if we don't want this welcome panel to show upon subsequent startups, we can uncheck this option here before we close the panel. Okay, so this area here is our main document view, otherwise known as the canvas. So this is going to contain all of our document work. Now, we're going to look at personas. So this is an important concept to explore. Personas, located up here, are effectively different workspaces for different tasks. So we start in the main publisher persona here, and this contains all of the tools and functionality we would require for typical desktop publishing work. However, in Publisher, if you have Affinity Designer and or Photo installed, you can move across into the Designer and Photo personas. So for example, if I move across to the Photo persona, notice that my workspace changes, and it very much behaves like the main Photo persona within Affinity Photo, so now we have access to all of our image editing functionality. And when we're finished here, we can move back to the Publisher persona, like so. Now, at the top here, you have the toolbar, and this just contains various commonly used functions. For example, you have the Baseline Grid Manager, you have Guides and Snapping, you have Text Wrapping options up here, and also you have Geometry and Alignment options in the far right. Then on the left here, you have the Tools panel, which contains all of the tools you'll need to use. For example, you've got the Artistic Text tool, the Table tool, and notice some of these icons have a little icon in the bottom right here. This means they contain tool flyouts, and to access them you can either just click on the little icon, like so, or you can just long click on the main icon to access the flyout. By default we have the Move Tool selected, which enables you to select and manipulate layer content on your pages. And following on from the tools, we have the context toolbar, which is located here. And this will change depending on which tool you have selected. So for example, if I select the frame text tool, notice all of my options here give me the functionality I require from that tool. And finally, on the right, we have what is called the studio. And this comprises a number of different panels, as you can see here. Now by default, Affinity Publisher has quite an economical layout, but to access some of the additional functionality, we can go to View, Studio, and here we have a number of panels that we can show. For example, if you were looking for the Find and Replace functionality, that is actually located on a panel, which we can enable from this option here, and there is our Find and Replace panel. And you can actually just click drag panels out on their own, and resize them, then drag them around the interface to customize your layout. Or you can offer them to a tab group, like so, to dock the panel. Another example is if I was trying to generate a table of contents. So again, I can go to View, Studio, Table of Contents, and that panel now appears on the left-hand studio. And of course, again, I can customize this, so if I wanted it across on the right, I could simply click drag to float the panel and then dock it on the right hand side. So there we go, just a quick look at Affinity Publisher's user interface.